such, it's designed to um, kind of formalize data analysis. So let's first talk about data analysis. Um, a data <coughs> analysis is like the process you do when you start with a data set, apply various transformations, aggregations, filtrations, and in order to obtain your result. If you do that for a single data set, you can do that just by hand, but usually it's tens to hundreds or thousands of data sets, and then this will be a pain, obviously, and it will also not be reproducible. So um, in order to get a reproducible data analysis, um, I always say that you have to kind of consider three dimensions. Uh, first of all, um, automation. <coughs> so um, this is the process of getting from raw data to final figures um, without manual intervention and thereby documenting all parameters, tools, and versions that you use. And um, the second aspect is scalability. So uh, you need to kind of scale up across all the data sets that you want to process, and um, thereby execute uh, your analysis for tens to thousands of data sets, and um, do this in a way that efficiently uses the available resources. In particular, it should be agnostic of the actual computing platform because if you kind of design your analysis towards one platform, it's not reproducible anymore for other people who may not have that platform available or that particular cluster system also. So, so in any reproducible analysis should be kind of, the description of the analysis itself should be independent of the underlying execution platform. Um, and the final dimension is portability. <coughs> so you, one, one needs to be able to take such an analysis that is already formalized and put it on a new kind of vanilla system without any particular setup and then run it without following like hundreds of lines of, of uh, installation instructions or things like that. And um, MakeMake is one system to do these kinds of things and it's uh, around already to, since 2012. And um, since I started measuring this in 2015, it has been downloaded 82,000 times from the Biocomla platform. And it has been used in various high-impact publications uh, to ensure reproducibility. Um, so, so let's have a look at how SnakeMake achieves these three uh, goals. So um, first of all, uh, in SnakeMake you define such a data analysis in terms of rules that roughly represent these, these steps that you have in your analysis. So you kind of decompose your analysis into, into these rules. And these rules define input files and output files. And SnakeMake automatically determines dependencies between these rules by matching input against output. And by this, you get something that's called a directed acyclic graph of jobs. And these jobs are then executed on whatever computing platform you have. And um, let's have a look at these rules. So they, they um, can be defined in SnapMake in a very simple um, textual way. So pretty much only containing the information that they should deliver. Like um, every step or rule has its name. It has one or more input files, one or more output files. And for example, a shell command that describes how to obtain the output from the input. And, um, Input and output files can contain wildcards, like you see here in these braces, and thereby rules are generalizable across samples, parameters, or any combination thereof. And um, this is actually not a kind of uh, a domain-specific language that is, uh, that is defined on its own, but it's rather a syntactical extension of Python. So outside of these rules, you can use any Python code you want, which make Snake make particularly powerful. So it allows you to be very abstract and very like focused on defining your workflow, but you can do arbitrary complex things outside of that, which makes it basically as powerful as Python, but a bit more readable than if you would write your own workflow in, in Python, for example. And you can also annotate these rules with a lot of additional stuff, like um, defining log files, uh, additional parameters, resource usage, and so on. Um, so instead of having a shell command, like you see here, for generating the output, which is maybe most common in bioinformatics, you can also combine like shell command-based rules with rules that rather use scripts, for example, custom scripts to create certain plots, doing certain analysis, clustering, whatever you, you might come up with in your analysis. 
And for this, Snakemaker Maker allows you to, to define these scripts outside of your actual workflow definition, while it does this in a way that you still have <coughs> access to all the properties of the rule inside the script. And this allows you to like, basically start directly with the logic of the script without writing boilerplate code for a passing command line in order to pass these input and output files to the script and so on. So this makes these scripts very short and can be R or Python. Additionally, it allows you to define wrappers or use wrappers for generating the output and these uh, are available in a central repository uh, which contains a lot of like uh, largely used bioinformatics tools already like BWA, SAM tools and so on. The, the main goal of these wrappers is that you don't have to rewrite one certain command line again and again but rather like just specify this, this identifier for the wrapper and then uh, can benefit of what others did before. And in particular, these, these wrappers are also um, unit tested so that you really have a guarantee when you use that, it always works um, in the way it, it should be uh, working. And finally, it also allows you to obtain output from input via referring to CWM tool definitions. So we heard about CWM in the talk before. <coughs> um, so in case there is already a CWM tool, you can also directly use that from the tool snake. The second aspect um, of reproducibility here is uh, scalability. So obviously, if you cannot, or <coughs> somebody else who wants to reproduce your results, cannot scale your analysis to his platform, then you also cannot reproduce your results. Therefore, uh, scalability is also uh, important for reproducibility. And um, in order to achieve scalability, SnakeMake uh, follows a certain paradigm, which is that the workflow definition itself shall be independent um, of the underlying computing platform and the available resources. And to achieve that, it allows you to define resource usage in an abstract way uh, within these rules. And then upon execution, the Snake Mix scheduler uh, can use this information in order to scale your analysis to the uh, available resources. This can be on a single workstation, it can be on a compute server with many cores, it can be on a cluster, and so on. So basically every major computing platform is supported in, in the current Snake Mix version. So even, even grid systems where you don't have a shared file system or cloud computing <coughs> via Kubernetes, for example, in Amazon, Google, but also uh, the Dendy Cloud uh, is supported in, in various ways, um, which I'll come to next. So, SnakeMate um, can be executed on all of these platforms via a very simple command line interface. So, locally, you would just run it via specifying the number of cores to use. In a classical HPC cluster, you specify the submission command and the number of jobs that shall be scheduled in parallel. And with Kubernetes, you additionally specify where um, data shall be stored and retrieved from. So, for example, with Google, you specify Google storage, but, but in case of Denby, for example, you would specify the Denby object storage here uh, and a certain prefix within that, within that storage. Um, <coughs> and um, so the Denby object storage, as far as I know, can be accessed via the S3 protocol, which is supported by SnakeMax. So, you can directly run if you set up a Kubernetes cluster in the Denby cloud, you can directly run SnakeMate with a command line like this. And if you, if you use a different system, um, like for example, just a single large VM, it might be appropriate for your analysis as well, then you can use it in this way on, on the Denby cloud. Or if you set up a, a, like a classical HPC cluster on the Denby cloud, maybe with the, with the, the tool uh, chain we have seen before, um, then you could use this classical way of, of submitting jobs. This depends on, on what you prefer and uh, what is best for your project. Um, all these like configurations that you might end up setting here with additional parameters perhaps and so on can also be persisted into so-called profiles and there's actually a repository online with uh, several profiles available for, for um, popular cluster systems or grid systems and you can, you can get inspiration there, or, or adapt these, or directly use them. Um, <coughs> yeah, so the third dimension um, of reproducibility in SnakeMake is um, the portability. So in order to really get fully reproducible uh, data analysis, you kind of need to be able to, as I said, execute this on a, on a new system without having to set up anything, except of maybe SnakeMake itself. Um, 
And this, of course, requires you to, to install like the software of all of these steps before executing it, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to execute any of these steps. And this is kind of a complicated task because we all know that like bioinformatics software is, is very diverse in methods of installation. You have these classical things like um, system-wide installation, which is on the cloud not so much a problem. On a cluster system, uh, classical cluster system uh, causes a lot of problems, especially with version conflicts. Uh, and if you think about reproducibility, you cannot like just think about the cloud because, well, it might work there, but it might not work for others who, who don't have access to the cloud. So, kind of, you need a general solution to all these different ways of installing. And there are these uh, Python and Perl and, and so on based installers or R installers that, that are all nicely usable, but they focus on one language ecosystem. And with the real analysis, you often have steps that use different languages and then it's not use anymore. So what, what is needed is a way of installing software packages without um, kind of without being being tied to one particular language ecosystem. And the solution to this is the Conda package manager, which kind of allows you to normalize the installation of software via so-called recipes. And these recipes kind of consist of a, a build uh, like a, a meta uh, file which contains um, meta information like the name, the version, dependencies, and so on. And a build script which basically resembles the, the uh, installation steps that you usually see in a readme file of the software tree. And uh, Conda takes this information and builds a package out of that. And this um, package can then be relocated to a new system and, and installed there. And in particular, the installation here is, um, is um, done in user space, so you can do that with admin rights, and uh, you can even install into isolated environments, which makes this very useful for workflow definition. Um, namely, it is possible to integrate Conda-based uh, um, installation of software packages into SnakeMate, and, by, uh, and this works by uh, specifying a certain directive, like you see here, this Conda directive, which points to a, a <coughs> condition of a software environment, which is contained in a separate text file, like you see here, this is YAML, <coughs> and um, this, this separate text file defines the software libraries and tools that you need to execute this rule. And Conda takes this information here and creates an isolated software environment which is independent of the rest of your system. And um, it contains all the dependencies that these tools might need. And uh, even you can have like two environments on the same system um, which, which have conflicting versions, for example, conflicting Python versions or conflicting versions of system libraries. So in a way, this also solves this, uh, this problem that Peter mentioned of con uh, that can be solved with containerization, but on a level that is even more limited <coughs> than a container because it only really installs the software in, a, in an isolated way. And via integrating with, with Compass, NakeMake allows you to make use of this ability within your workflow, which has two benefits. First of all, um, you can isolate the software environment of every step of your workflow, which is good for reproducibility, because if you, if you develop it continuously, you don't have side effects when, when you change something in one step. Other steps are not affected at all. You can even have steps that use conflicting software uh, in terms of versions, for example. And the, the second aspect is that um, by, uh, by uh, um, specifying the software within the workflow, um, you also document what <coughs> you actually use, and others can exactly replicate it like that by just executing the workflow, and SnakeMake takes care of instantiating these environments before actually executing every step. So for bioinformatics, there's a project that um, provides you with um, a plethora of, of um, bioinformatics related packages in Conda format, which is the Bioconda project that we started in uh, 2015, I think. Uh, actually, one of, the, one of the main guys in Bioconda is also sitting in the very back, Jörn Grün. And uh, yeah, this has been kind of a great success. So by now we have over 4,400 bioinformatics related packages in Bioconda and uh, over 6 million downloads and over 400 contributors. And uh, one nice thing about Conda and Bioconda is that it has been like adopted by not only SnakeMake, but also by other very popular work workflow management systems like NextFlow and uh, especially also Galaxy. And 
Um, yeah, Bioconda is kind of among different competing um, technologies or, or repositories. It's, well, it's actually the, the largest and also at the same time the youngest. So we really kind of become something like a backbone of, of bioinformatics in terms of software deployment. Um, yeah, so, um, but, but SnakeMix is actually not limited to using Conda <coughs> for, for, for deployment of software dependencies. It can alternatively also use containerization to do that. So if you prefer containerization, you can just um, refer to a Docker container, for example, within your rule. And then SnakeMix will use Singularity um, to, to um, like pull the container and, and instantiate it before executing the shell command within the container, which gives you basically the same effect, but let's say a bit more, even more reproducibility in terms of that you not only define the software stack for the shell command to execute, but also like the underlying operating system. In a sense. Um, and then there's <coughs> a third option in SnakeMake, which is uh, that you can combine containerization and Conda by specifying a global singularity container that shall be used for all the rules. And this container is basically providing you with the operating system, and in this case, additionally, with Conda within the container. And then you can define the Conda environment for each rule, and by that, define the software stack to use on top of that operating system. And this way, you can, like on the fly, explore different software stacks without having to redesign a container for every stack, which makes it very fast and uh, ad hoc. And even at the execution time, you, you or the user of the workflow can decide which level of, of um, like deployment he wants to use. He can use Conda alone, which will work in this case, in this setup. Uh, or you can use Singularity and Conda in combination. You don't have to adopt the workflow for that. It's just the same workflow and it can be decided upon execution. And finally, something something more uh, like something completely different is how you kind of deliver your results that you uh, obtain with your workflow to your collaborators or people who read your papers and so on. And um, this is um, basically two aspects: first, the presentation of, of results and also data provenance. And for that, SnakeMake provides. Um, self-contained HTML reports that you can generate automatically out of your workflow without having to uh, um, change a lot of things in your workflow. <coughs> These reports contain like runtime statistics, also in terms of when files were created and so on, which software versions were used to create these files, which Conda packages, which containers were used to create these files. Um, and then you can also integrate by annotating rules, you can integrate uh, output of rules into the report, like you see here. So we have created one plot in a rule, and this is then integrated into the report. And uh, by clicking on that in your browser, you can download it. So it's kind of a self-contained HTML file that can be given to collaborators, uh, containing like all information that is there about your um, about your analysis. And you don't have to do a lot of things to create that. It's basically done automatically. Um, yeah, finally, also about publishing, um, SnakeMake also provides a workflow for actually publishing not only your results in terms of the paper, but also the analysis, the entire analysis and code base that led to these results. And for that, SnakeMake provides the functionality to create something like a workflow archive, uh, which then contains all the, um, all the um, input files of your workflow, all the code, and all the conduct packages. And this archive can be uploaded to a service like Zenodo, where you can acquire a document object identifier, which is a citable URL. And you can then, for example, cite that in your paper. And a reader can just download this archive from, from the DOI and unpack it and then run SnakeMake on it, for example, via specified use Conda or use Conda and use Singularity. And then you will get, like, let's say, exactly the same results if you did your job right in terms of generating a robust analysis that is not dependent on hardware differences and so on. So everything that is robust uh, to hardware differences will be exactly the same because you use exactly the same software versions, exactly the same code. Okay. And um, yes, so this is a way to, to kind of get a reproducible data analysis object that can be, uh, can be used by others 
in order to reproduce or also to adapt to, your, to their own data easily. And SnakeMaker did not, has a lot of additional features currently already uh, that I cannot cover in this, in this talk. So for example, um, it provides uh, something that I call semi-automatic graph partitioning. So if you think about this graph of jobs that I've shown in the beginning, and uh, uh, you assume that some of these jobs are very short running, some of them are longer running. It makes a lot of sense, especially in the cloud, where network traffic is kind of important. It makes sense to group some of them together. And SnakeMake allows you to annotate your, your workflow in a sense that allows it to uh, like automatically infer groups of jobs that shall be submitted together to, to um, cluster or cloud nodes in order to, to save time in terms of not storing intermediate files in the object storage and so on. And uh, the same mechanism is also used to uh, implement streaming between jobs. So if you have very large output files, it's not always feasible or desirable to store them on disk or in object storage and so on. And for these cases where you don't really need them, but just need them need to pass them to the next job, um, SnakeMake allows you to stream between two jobs. And they, of course, two jobs um, that stream uh, between each other, or even the chain of jobs that streams, uh, they will, of course, be automatically submitted to the same uh, physical node uh, in order to have efficient streaming there. Um, yeah, it, it supports the definition of temporary and protected files so that you can get rid of intermediate uh, information uh, automatically once it's not needed anymore. And you can also protect in, uh, files that are, that are very important and may be uh, expensive to create. Yeah, I've already shown data provenance and it, it also has a sophisticated log file handling um, that allows you to de detect errors and, and um, preserve all information that has been acquired during runtime. Uh, it also allows you to export your entire data analysis to CWL, uh, which is currently in a sense that it does not really like give you an equivalent workflow just in CWL, but rather an executable entity in CWL. So it's not, not on the level of rules, but on the level of jobs. So for a particular per parameter set and a particular set of samples, it will give you a CWL definition that you can execute on a CWL executor. Uh, so in the sense of making it available, available to further systems or if you, in case you, you want to use property to, properties of a certain executor. Um, a true CWL export is not really possible uh, because <coughs> it is currently at least more powerful in terms of what you can express with it than what you can do in CWL. Um, so, so, um, but this is the current state of CWL export. And in the future <coughs> there will be more features like um, Graph partitioning uh, will be extended towards different ways of partitioning, so for example in terms of array and batch jobs. Um, and uh, further there will be Jupyter Notebook integration, so that you will not only have scripts that you can define for generating your output uh, from input, but you can also define Jupyter Notebooks that then can be interactively, first of all, developed with a certain rule and then automatically be generalized towards other uh, parameters of these rules. Um, it will be able to automatically infer resource requirements of tools um, by machine learning, and uh, this is currently being worked on. There will be a task execution server backend, so this is a project of GA4GH uh, to kind of generalize all these cluster engines towards one common API, and this will be soon be supported. And finally, there will be a Google Cloud platform backend. This is currently being set up to, to develop and which will be sponsored by Google. So. Okay, so to conclude, uh, SnakeMag kind of tries to achieve reproducibility by covering these three dimensions. Uh, and this happens via uh, a human readable specification language, reusable modularization, and <coughs> definition capabilities, seamless execution on all platforms without adaption of the workflow definition, and uh, integrated package management.